Welcome to video number two in my mini series of Google Web Stories. And in today's video, I thought I'll show you how to make Google Web Stories and what tools and plugins you'll need to create some amazing web stories that hopefully can land on the front page of Google Discovery and bring you in thousands of visitors to your website. So let's get into this. Hi and welcome back to my channel again. So this is video number two in a little mini series about Google Web Stories. I've been using Google Web Stories on my mega website and on my pet website to try and get some alternative organic traffic to normal Google search and possibly Pinterest. And so far it's looking good. We're getting a little bit of traffic to them. At the minute we've not had any pins go viral but we are getting a few clicks each day now on some of these stories. So I thought it might be worth installing them on helpfulmonk.com. That's the website I am building and I'm going to give it away at the end of the year to one lucky subscriber. So if you don't know about that or you've not entered into the competition to win it, you need to head over to carlbrobbin.com, click the menu that says giveaway and subscribe to my newsletter. That's all you need to do to have a chance of winning that website. So I thought if we head over to the computer now, I'll show you what WordPress plugin I'm using to build the web stories. Also some alternative tools that you can use that make it a little bit easier. And then also a basic rundown of the process. We'll have a look at building a story and then you can see exactly what it's all about. And then we'll also take a look at some of the web stories that I'm actually ranking for. Some web stories that I've actually created, yes, I don't know why I do it, but I will give you an insight and a look at some of the uh, stories over on hutchandcage.com and you can see a general idea of what it's all about. So let's head over to the computer now and let's get started. Okay, so let's get going and actually show you what these web stories are all about and how you can make them. So first of all, we are gonna be using Google's own plugin. It's just web stories plugin, but there are some other tools that can really help you. What they do is they help you create some templates so that the process of making these stories is super quick. Let's have a look at a couple here. So the first one is this one. This one is Newsrooms AI. And again, it is designed just for you to create templates. And this helps you create the basis for each story. And then it's very, very quick and simple to simply add some images to each page and add some text to each page and click publish. Very, very simple. There is another one, this is called Make Stories. And again, it's very, very similar. It's just a drag and drop page builder for making the templates for these stories. But some of these are paid tools, but I just use the Google's own WordPress plugin. So let's head over to Helpful Monk. So here we are now, we're just gonna install this uh, plugin. So we just go to plugins and add new. So let's simply type web stories and it should find it. Let's have a look. So yeah, so it's found it here. So Web Stories by Google, updated six days ago. Click Install. Let's click Activate. And you can see on the left-hand side, it installs it into your dashboard sidebar. So if you click My Stories, you can see currently we have no stories. So we can simply create a story or we can use their templates. So if we have a look at their templates, you can see here there's a number of templates to help you and get you started. Some of them are okay. Uh, I would advise that you create your own template and when you find one that you like, just stick with it. You can use this template on every story. So we have on my mega website, one template and we use that for every single story. We just obviously change the images and the content. So let's say you find one that you really like. Let's say you like this one here. You would click use template And you can see the story is already built for you. So if we flick through the pages, you can see them here, or you can see down below, there's all the pages to your story here. If you want to see how it looks like to others, you would simply click up here, preview, and this is exactly what the web story will look like to a viewer on their mobile device or on tablet, desktop, whatever it may be. And you can see the pages slowly click through unravel and reveal the entire story and then when you get to the last page there'll be a link that says click here to visit the website and they head straight over to your website hence you've got some organic traffic i'm going to point out some of the basic features to get you started there are dozens of videos on youtube showing you how to create step by step and i think 
It is a very simple process. I don't think you're going to have much trouble creating the pins. The only things you'll need to know is there are a few mandatory things you need to do, which is what I'm going to cover here. And if you do those, everything else is fine. You should be okay. It's all about the style and the design. So don't forget you'll be building these web stories based on an article that you've already written. So all the content is on that article. So I suggest you open it in a new tab and that you grab things like the title, the paragraphs, the pages that you want to use on these web stories. So all the images and everything you will need for that article should be here. They're already in your media library database. So this is the database of all the images from blog content that I've used on helpfulmonk.com. If you want to add more, you can click here. You can see there's your videos, there's your images, or you can upload a new one here. If you click here, it, again, it shows you some extra images. So this is the images that's been provided by Google Web Stories that they feel you could use. And again, you can select categories, you can select some videos, you can select GIFs. There's all sorts you can use on here. So let's say you wanted this back cover changing and you wanted a video. Let's say, let's have a look, what have we got? So there's a video here of some traffic. All we would do is click, hold it, and drag it over onto your um, pin, let go, and, the, and that video is now on page one. Now what I want to remind you is these images that you are seeing here, these are the pages. So this is not the cover. This is page one of your story. So this is not what people will see when they search in Google. This is what they will see when they find your web story and click it. This will be image number one that they see. So again, if you want to get rid of that image at the background, simply highlight it and delete it. And let's drag another image in. So maybe this food one, grab and hold it and drop it over onto the image. And there we go. You can see again, that is now your background image. So you now may want to change the text. So you can see up here in the top corner, here's your texts and they're exactly like a WordPress blog post. So you have H1, H2, H3, etc. And again, use exactly like you would on a WordPress blog post. So use some H2s, use some H3. So a top tip for you is you need to make sure all your lettering, your wording is a minimum of 24 pixels large. So if you click here, paragraph, let's say we want to add another paragraph. You can see here, see here it's added one. All you would need to do is make sure that the minimum size lettering is 24 pixels. You can see here, currently it's set at 18. So you need to really make it 24. So as long as you click 24, you can see the size of this writing has increased. And that's the minimum size that you will need to add to any of these pages. And again, like I say, you can delete it, you can change it, you can do whatever you wish. So if we go to a page here, so let's have a look. Let's say we want to change this here. All you would do is simply highlight it. And then let's say you want to change the color on the right hand side. You can see the colors are here. Let's say we want that blue, click blue. And you can see we've changed the writing. Again, you can highlight it and you can make it bigger, smaller, however you wish. And again, change the image by simply deleting that. Go to the top here, images, click and hold it, drag it over to your page, let go. And again, there you go. So you continue to do that through the entire web story until you're happy with it. When you're happy with it, there are some basic functions that you have to do. And number one is to add a title. So if you look in the top here, let, I'm just going to take this as an example. You may, the title of your blog post might be the right tools for the job. You basically put the title of your article in the top there. Now that is mandatory. You have to do that. So that is also SEO focused. So you would put your keyword in there. Then the next thing you need to do is click here and you can see we have three elements. We have design, document and checklist. Now checklist, I'll warn you. Do not worry about what it says. It does give you some indications of what's right and what's wrong, but often it tells you everything's wrong when it actually isn't. So I don't even check this at all. You just basically need to make sure you have your title in, then you go to documents and you can see here, you have the option to add your cover image and your logo. Now these are mandatory. So you have to have a cover image. Now your cover image is what people will find when they search. 
So that is the key. That's the eye grabber, that's the attention grabber. So you want to make sure you have a really good cover image. And the way to do that is simply click here. And again, it's gonna open your media library and you need to make a really nice cover image. You can do that in Canva or it may already be an image that you have from your blog post. So let's say we're going to choose this one, seven amazing things you can do with lemons. Click insert and you can see here, it has not added it to the story, it's added it as the cover image. And that's what they will see when they search in Google. The next thing you need to do is make sure you add your logo again. Click media library, find your logo and add your logo. So those are three really important aspects. The next is a description. Now this is a hundred character description and it's basically like a meta description that you would use for a WordPress blog. So this might be seven amazing things to do with lemons, etc., and use the whole 100 characters. So those are the main four things you need to make sure you do. Number one, have a title. Number two, a cover image. Number three, have a logo. And number four, have a description, a story description. It will automatically create your permalink and it will add web stories into that permalink. So Google will know this is not a blog post, it is a web story. And then the most important thing you need to do, and this is the really the key thing, you need to add a link to your website. That can say read more, visit here, see the full article, whatever that may be. And you need to add that into the first page. Then what it will do, it will automatically populate it for all the other pages. So you can see here, this one says, issue number two, you might put read more here and then you grab the URL. So I'm just going to randomly get a URL. So I'm going to get the URL for that article. So let's just grab this lemon one. So if I highlight this and click design, you can see there's a box here that says link and I'm going to enter the URL here. And that has now added the link back to that article and it will do it on every single page. So every single page that has a link that says read here or read more, it will auto generate and auto populate it because we've added it to page one. Once you're happy with your story and you have those key elements, then you're ready to check it one final time. Click preview. When you're happy, click publish. And it's simple as that. If we click publish now, you will see success, your story is published. View story, and this is actually what will appear in the SERP index when people find your story, and you can see it'll flick through all the pages. When somebody's happy and they're read enough and they want to see your website, remember, you have the link here, they will click that, and it sends them straight over to your blog post. Now there's one more thing you can do. You can check to make sure it is indexing and you can also see what it looks like in the SERP index. So let's check that out now. So to do that, you need to search for Google's own tool and it's called AMP test. If we just search for that, you can see it finds it here. Click that and all we need to do is paste the URL for your story. So if you want to get the URL for that story, just head into your dashboard and click my stories. And you can see here the three little dots. If we click that, you can copy the stories URL. So we've got the stories URL. Let's enter it into here and click test. And you can see it's run and it said we have a valid story. If you want to have a look at what your story looks like, I think this is the cool part. There you go. You can see that is exactly what it will look like when somebody searches in search engines and you can see here uh, it's taken the cover image remember what I said that is the most valuable thing because when they're on Google discovery stories that will be what they see and just to prove it let's click that and here's the story we've just created okay so there you go now you know a little bit more about Google web stories and how you can make them free of charge on your website obviously you can outsource the process or you can do them yourselves. Much more financially rewarding if you do them yourselves, but if you don't have time, you can actually outsource the process. But for now, I'm gonna continue building them on my mega website and my pet website, and we'll start the process on helpfulmonk.com. I don't expect it to do anything for at least 30 or 40 days, 
and then we may start seeing some clicks. Although once those stories are indexed, there is no reason why Google can't pick up on it. I don't think there's a sandbox period for these. I think they will head straight into the SERP index and fingers crossed Google will pick up on them. So remember, if you're not entered into the competition to win helpfulmonk.com, you need to head over to carlbroben.com and register for my newsletter. And that way you'll have a chance of winning that website at the end of the year. So thanks very much for watching. The next video that will come out will be about traffic and tracking your web story. So we'll have a look at my analytics and we'll see if they're actually working and are we getting any traffic over to them. So for now, thank you very much. I'll see you in the next video.